Hello everybody. Um, what we're going to do today, we're going to make a door, a system where the character will run up to something, it will open up and yeah, be able to go through and you can do this for anything really, this could be like a lift or you know something that takes you somewhere, something that shuts when you walk away, but anyway, we'll just make a start. Um, if you right click, make a new blueprint, uh, make it an actor, we'll call this BP underscore doors, uh, and then open that up. So what we're going to need to do is, just like before, make a new scene, uh, it's just a habit to get into, bring that over to that, uh, like I said before, it allows us to have full control over what we put in. Um, in here, I'm going to grab a static mesh, and I'm going to make this a, uh, let's put a cube in here for now, shrink it up a bit, mm, there, sort of door-like there, very good, uh, and then we're going to grab a box. A nice box collision and have that around the actual object so this is something that the character has to walk into for it to trigger all right so what do we do next so we're going to go onto the event class and delete these which starts with uh, click on your box uh, right click we're going to add two events we're going to add the collision for beginning overlap and we're also going to add a collision for ending the overlap so when we hit it and when we don't hit it and we're gonna drag out from here I'm gonna use a timeline and I might do a video sort of explaining timelines a bit more uh, later on but just we we'll use this for now um, from here we're gonna drag out from here just type the word delay and I'm gonna drag out from here because what, what's gonna happen and it's gonna reverse um, basically the character is gonna walk into something this timeline is gonna fire off and move the door uh, what we want when you're not um, touching the, the the collision box is for a delay of say two seconds to, to happen and then the reverse and then the door closes again uh, all of that from there we're going to need a variable uh, I'm going to call make a new variable we're going to need to make this a vector so it's a vector variable I'm going to call it uh, store start location something like that where the door begins basically leave that there. Make sure you compile and save. And from yeah, okay, let's jump into the actual timeline now. Um so what we're gonna need to do, jump into your timeline, so you double click it. We're gonna make a new vector track, I believe. We've got a spoke track. And let's say vector track. Alright. And we're gonna call this door movement. So this is named, basically if I go back to our graph here, under these are tabs, we should have a new little bit here that says door movement, which we can select. Uh, so here we go. And what we're going to do, we probably, we've not used these before, so if I right click anywhere and say add a key, uh, it'll add one key here. If I right add, click somewhere else, right click, add another key. And I've got two key frames, basically. And I'm going to make sure that they are on the Z axis. Oops, I need to delete these. This is my bad. We don't want the x-axis. We want to go up on the, sorry, on the on the z-axis. So delete them. Lock x and y, and make sure it goes on z. So if I right-click now and add a key to z, that's better. Add another key to z. So that's better because we want to go up and down. So I'm going to make this one. I'm going to uh, the first keyframe is going to go at time zero, and it's going to be the value of zero. And the next one's going to be a little bit of a guess in some ways. It's going to be definitely at time one. Uh, and the value of say 150 let's we'll see what happens there you, you might have lost it all now uh, what we'll do if this happens you press this near hit fit horizontally and fit vertically and we're also going to want to change this to auto change this to auto to get a nice curve it's just smoother when it moves okay cool we can go back to the event graph and where are we going to go from here so we are going to on the update we click out and we go set actor uh, relative location and what we need from here is now we've got this door movement we're going to plus uh, vector plus vector and this is going to go to the location what are we trying to look for the location of it's the door so we're going to get that and we're going to block it in here all right so this is all going to affect this then it's going to change its new direction we want to change it to sweep as well um, click out from here. We 
now I find the door. Oops. So the door itself. Uh, wait, we need to call it static mesh, don't we? Uh, let's name this something a bit better. Mm. Test door. Right yeah, so we want to get the owner test door. There it is. So that's it's best as I name your things properly, otherwise you get in a mistake and you want static mesh one to fifty. Um, that's fine. That all looks okay though. Actually, let's save that. Um, but what we do need to happen is for something to happen when we start the map. So if we right click and we do a begin, uh, do we want to begin play, we are going to grab our door location, say set, drag that onto there, and we want to set the door location. So we want to get actor location, and from here we want to get our door again. So we want to get test door that here. Right, compile, save. So we've got our new blueprint here. There it is, won't get in the world. So now if we play, there it is. If we run up to it, hey, run away. There we go. There it goes, run underneath. Ooh, slightly too short. So let's go back here. If we go back to our timeline, change this value here to say 200 again it's going to be depending on your character depending on the height of things uh, we'll see how that goes so play run up to it there we go run underneath run away and it shuts awesome you can do that for all sorts of things you can have moving pa um, moving boxes you can make so things for your platformer or just basic doors like this lifts and all sorts so give that a try and see how you go Thank you.